And so our learning objective for this module is same with the previous module is after this session you will you will enable to calculate the cost of inventories using a retail inventory method. Yeah, so aside from gross profit method, so if you want to estimate the value of ending inventory, uh, you can use also the retail inventory method. So why should you use or why uh, retail inventory method and gross profit method are important for accountants? So diniskas natin yan last module. So yung mga reason kung bakit uh, tayo nag inventory estimation. So for retail inventory method, uh, is often used in the retail industry kaya nga retail inventory method ang tawag dyan so ginagamit siya sa mga retail industry like yung buy and sales department stores for example supermarket etc for me measuring inventories of large number of rapidly changing items uh, yan. so rapidly changing items with similar margins for which it is impractical to use other costing methods. So, syempre, dahil very uh, fast in transactions sa retail industry, so from time to time may increase, may decrease sa price, uh, merong specific method para sa kanila. So, yan nga yung retail inventory method. Uh, same with the gross profit method. So, the cost of inventory is determined by the appropriate percentage gross margin. So, nagko-compete din tayo dito ng cost ratio or gross profit margin. Siyempre, yung sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. So, yung ratio ng cost of goods sold to sales, yan yung cost ratio na tinatawag natin. So, REIT uh, requires maintenance of records of purchases at both cost and selling price. So, para magamit yung uh, retail inventory method, dapat meron tayong information about the retail price and meron din tayo dapat information uh, regarding cost. So, pag sinabi natin retail price, usually yan yung meron ng markup. Pag cost, wala pa siyang markup. Ratio of cost to retail is calculated and applied to the ending inventory at retail to compute the approximate cost. So, ang ginagamit natin dito, kinukuha natin yung ratio ng uh, goods available for sale at cost divided by yun sa uh, uh, goods available for sale at retail so para alam natin kung ano yung cost percentage uh, on the average for the uh, retail price. Bakit average ang sinabi ko? Kasi nga marami tayong kinoconsider. May kinoconsider tayong markup, may kinoconsider tayong markdown, markup cancellation, etc. Ayan. Ayan. So ito yung mga uh, iko-consider. So you need to Familiarize your, you need to familiarize yourselves uh, about these items. So, una, uh, yung freight in is an addition to purchases at cost only. So, usually ito, para hindi siya madaling makalimutan, basta kapag merong movement ng inventory, ibig sabihin may pumasok na inventory, may lumabas na inventory, yung item na yun, so, both at cost at retail dapat siya. So, either dinadagdag mo sa cost, dinadagdag mo rin sa retail, binabawas mo sa cost, binabawas mo din sa retail. For example, yung freight in. Siyempre, yung freight in, ano yan eh, bayad yan for delivery cost. So, kapag na-incur mo yung freight in, wala mo pumapasok o lumalabas na inventory. So, therefore, addition lang yan sa purchases at cost lang. So, minsan, sa problem, di naman masyado mahirap kasi kung at cost lang siya, cost information lang given. Pero kung kailangan siyang idagdag or ibawas both sa cost o sa retail, uh, most probably, given naman yung data for cost, given din yung data for retail. Pero ang technique lang dyan, kapag yung nature ng item is merong increase o merong, ay merong movement ng inventory, either pumasok yung inventory o lumabas yung inventory, uh, both cost and retail affected siya. Purchase discounts and purchase allowances sa gross profit method, kinoconsider siya. So, therefore, sa retail inventory, kinoconsider din siya. Pero, since pag merong purchase discount, merong purchase allowances, wala namang uh, pumasok or lumabas na inventory dyan. So, therefore, deduction lang siya sa uh, cost, cost lang. So, column lang ng cost or sa so, pag-compute lang ng goods available for sale at cost lang siya kinoconsider. Purchase return, syempre pag may binalik tayong purchases, 
So, may palabas na inventory. Kaya, tinan mo, deducted yan from cost and retail amounts. Kasi may movement ng inventory. Sales returns, uh, deducted from uh, retail sales only. Kasi hindi naman siya kasama sa pag-compute ng goods available for sale. Sales discount and sales allowances. Uh, hindi rin yan kasali sa pag-compute na goods available for sale. Uh, but take note, so for, for purpose of computation na uh, cost ratio, hindi natin siya kinoconsider. Diniscuss din natin yan no? last module sa gross profit method. So yung sales discount at sales allowances for computation of cost ratio or gross profit percentage, ini-ignore natin siya. Although, merong extension to the general rule, so na-discuss ko din sa previous module, kapag material or kapag based sa history, kinoconsider talaga yung discount at allowance sa pagkumpit ng gross profit rate. Isa sama. Pero pag wala sinabi sa problem, hindi natin yan i-consider. Yeah. Departmental transfer in, so debit yun. Take note, pag may departmental transfer in, movement from one department to another department, so, may movement ng inventory yan. So, therefore, addition yan sa both cost and retail. Kasi may pumasok na inventory. Yan. De departmental transferred out o transfer out. O, syempre, may lumabas na inventory. So, therefore, affected both cost and retail amount of purchases. So, kasama siya sa pag-compute ng goods available for sale. Normal losses, shortage, shrinkage are deducted from goods available for sale at retail only. So, hindi kasama si cost. But take note, this is after computing the cost ratio. So, hindi siya, naka, hindi siya kinoconsider sa pag-compute dapat ng cost ratio. So, pag nakapit mo na yung cost ratio, that's the time lang. Ide-deduct mo na si losses, uh, shortage, and shrinkage. Uh, kaya... Sa computation, ang ginagawa dyan kasi, ina na lang yan dun sa sales. Kasi di ba yung goods available for sale mo at retail, ibabawas natin yung sales natin. Kasi yung sales is cost of goods sold at retail yun. So, instead na ibawas natin diretsya si normal losses, dun sa goods available for sale at retail, idadagdag na lang natin siya dun sa net sales, which is yung cost of goods sold at retail. So, in effect, binawas din siya. So, sa slide kasi, according to the slide, yung normal losses should be deducted from goods available for sale. So, para mabawa siya automatic, i-add na lang natin yan sa net sales. Abnormal losses are deducted from both cost and retail amounts of purchases before computing the cost ratio. So, uh, if you remember yung cost accounting nyo, yung abnormal losses, hindi siya product cost. So, therefore, tinatanggal natin yan dun sa pag-compute ng goods available for sale. Or kinoconsider din natin yan sa pag-compute ng uh, cost ratio. Kasi nga, pag abnormal period cost, dapat, wala dapat yan sa product cost. So, dededuck natin siya. Now, take note, sa so, dededuck natin yan before computing the cost ratio. So, hindi kagaya dun sa normal after. Kaya dapat, pag yung normal losses, uh, kung may binigay sa problem na cost amount, Tsaka retail amount, ignore natin yung cost amount. Retail amount lang dapat siya. Kasi yung normal losses, binabawas natin yan sa goods available for sale at retail. Pero after computing the cost ratio. Discounts to employees and favored customers are deducted from the goods available for sale at retail. So after computing the cost ratio. So ang treatment for the discount. For the discount, tsaka normal losses are the same. So, bawas sila dun sa goods available for sale at retail. Pero hindi ni sila consider sa pag-compute ng cost ratio. So, in effect, a-add na lang natin to sa net sales. So, add na lang natin sa net sales. Ayan. So, uh, aside from yung mga transferred in, freight out, uh, employee discounts, etc., so, aside from that one, so, kinoconsider natin yung uh, mga markup, markdown, etc. Kasi kapag retail, di ba, uh, from time to time, di ba, every payday, merong uh, sales. Ay, sales tuloy. Uh, merong sales sa SM, for example, o sales sa uh, department store. O minsan, from time to time, may promo, for example. Kahit wala. So, 
tema nature. Nature ng mga promo na uh, ino-offer ng different stores. So, the original selling price, ibig sabihin yung cost of goods sold pag multiply mo ng o yung cost per unit, pag multiply mo ng target profit, yun yung original retail price. So, sabi niya dyan, yung original selling prices daw of goods may be modified as a result of some uh, market and economic forces. So, di ba, may mga promotional campaign niya, okay, demand and supply. Thus, the following terms are very important for you. Although, di naman siya masyado mahirap pagdating sa competition. So, una, yung first markup natin, so, kinoconsider para makupit natin yung original selling price. So, yun nga yung sa cost accounting. If your cost per unit is 100 and your target profit per unit is 40%. So, offer mo siya ng 140%. So, 140%, that is the original selling price. Of course, minsan may uh, promotion ka. So, bababaan mo yung uh, price mo or tataasan mo yung price mo. Ayan, sabi niya. So, yung markup or additional markup is an increase in the selling price. So, ang original selling price mo, for example, ang cost kasi per unit is 100. Eh. Eh, gusto mo ng 40% na Uh, profit. So, i-multiply mo to ng 1.4. So, therefore, yung 140, ito yung original selling price. Ngayon, sabi niya, markup or additional markup, an increase in the selling price. So, ibig sabihin, increase dun sa 40%. So, alimbawa, dagdag tayo ng 10, magiging 150 na siya. So, yung 10, yan yung additional markup. So, pag sinabi natin markdown, So, decrease in the selling price below the original retail price. So, ang original retail price mo is 140. So, ibinaba natin siya sa 120. So, yung difference silang dalawa na 20 pesos, ito yung markdown. Ayan. So, we have markup cancellation, decrease in selling price but not below the original retail price. So, sabi ko kanina, ang original markup natin is 40%. Kaya ang original selling price mo is 140. Nag-add tayo ng 10. So, this is the additional markup. So, ang selling price na 150. So, pag sinabi natin markup cancellation, cancel lang natin yung 10. O kung hindi 10, uh, bawas tayo ng 5. Basta hindi bababa dun sa original selling price na 140. So, ang tawag dun is markup cancellation. So, kasi ang original, no, kinancel mo yung markup mo. So, markdown cancellation, an increase in the selling price but not above, but not below the original selling price. So, yung isang example naman kanina, from 140 papunta sa 120, so may decrease na 20. If, kung sinabing markup, uh, markdown cancellation, so yung 20, babawasan natin. Ibig sabihin, from 120, gusto ko sa uling taasan, but not more than 140. Kasi pag tumasa 140, additional markup na ang tawag doon. So, alimbawa, one, from 120, gagawin mo siyang 130. So, meron kang from 120 to 130, yung 10 na difference, ang tawag natin doon is markdown cancellation. So, yung net markup na tinatawag, so, ito is uh, markup minus markup cancellation. Ayan. Pag sinabi naman nating markdown, markdown, Minus, markdown, cancellation naman siya. Ito na sulat ko. Ayan. So, yun lang ang ibig sabihin. So, minsan sa problem, di na pinapakita yung markup, markdown. Pinapakita na lang net markup or net markdown. Pero, yun din yung uh, ibig sabihin nun. Ayan. So, uh, I told you uh, last night to, uh, I will update the multiple choice handout first kasi uh, I noticed that from the previous author, so meron sila ibang treatment so nung binasa ko si Kiso, so dalawa pa yung treatment niya doon sa markdown, so isa consider yung isa hindi consider but according to our textbook uh, from our very own dean, sabi niya the method prescribed by IS number 2 is the method that considers both net markups and net markdowns in the computation of the cost ratio. So, mas madali pa doon sa textbook natin kasi both consider na lang. Hindi kagaya doon sa foreign author pag sinabing conventional, for example, hindi kinoconsider ang markdown, puro markup lang, or etc. 
Pero sa atin, so sa Philippine setup, pareho na lang siya ang kinoconsider. Ayan. So, cost ratio can be computed using average method tsaka yung first in, first out method. Ang pinagkaiba lang uh, sa pag-compute ng cost ratio, pag-average method, kasali yung beginning inventory. So, including beginning inventory. Pero kapag first in, first out method, uh, hindi kasali yung beginning inventory. So, no beginning inventory. Sa pag-compute ng cost ratio, ito klas. Cost ratio. Ayan, sa pag-compute lang na cost ratio. Tignan niyo example. So, uh, I have one example. So, sabi niya, the following information was taken from the accounting records of ABC Corporation for the month of December. So, we have sales, 198,000. Sales discount, 2,000. Uh, sales returns, uh, 2,000. Additional markup, 20,000. Uh, markup cancellations, uh, 3,000. Markdowns, 18,600. Markdown cancellations, 5,600. So, we have freight in for 8. Abnormal losses at cost, 2,000. So, uh, normal losses, 3,000. Purchases at cost, 96. Purchases at retail, 176. So, if you notice, so, basta affected both cost at si retail, may given silang uh, amount na usually magkaiba yung mas malaki yung uh, amount for retail price syempre kasi pag sinabi natin retail price may additional markup yun yun purchase return at cost purchase returns at retail beginning inventory at cost beginning inventory at retail departmental transferred in at cost kasi may movement yan eh may pumasok na inventory. Departmental in at retail, 6,000. So, abnormal losses at retail. So, 4,000. So, take note, magka-partner silang dalawa. And lastly, employee discounts, o 2,000. Yan. So, sabi niya, instructions use, using retail inventory method. So, compute. So, yung specific instructions nandun sa different slides. Uh, for... Ayan. So, compute the goods available for sale at cost at, and at retail. Uh, ginawa ko is naka-excel na yan kasi medyo madaming item. Hindi ka siya pagsinulat ko. So, yung usual lang na computation. So, we have column for cost. We have column for retail. So, if you want to check, so please refer to the uh, given uh, data for this particular problem do sa previous slide baka kasi mamaya may na-overlook ako so beginning inventory at cost 60,000 uh, beginning inventory at retail that's 93 so purchases uh, 96 at cost 176 at retail so at yan purchase returns binabawas so minus 4,000 at cost uh, minus 6,000 at retail uh, both affected Freight in, sa cost lang siya. Uh, positive kasi i-add ang freight in. Kung may purchase discount, kasali din siya sa i-consider kasi purchase naman yan. Sales discount at sales allowance yung hindi kinoconsider. Additional markup, if you notice, uh, wala namang additional markup at cost kasi nga markup eh. So, ibig sabihin, at retail lang dapat. So, doon lang siya sa retail. So, plus 20,000. Markup cancellation, so kasi kinancel yung markup, so minus sa retail. So, 20,000 minus 3,000, yan yung net markup na tinatawag. Markdown, syempre, decrease dun sa uh, original, uh, ano, ano ba ibig sabihin ito? Original selling price, so minus 18,6, kasi markdown nga. Markdown cancellation, syempre, kinancel mo yung binawas mo before dun sa original selling price. Kaya add natin yung 5-6. Departmental transferred in. So, merong pumasok sa atin na inventory. May movement of inventory. So, therefore, both cost and retails are affected. Given naman doon sa problem. So, plus 4,000 sa cost. Plus 6,000 sa retail. Ngayon, kung ang binigay is departmental transferred out, syempre, minus yun. Kasi palabas yung inventory. Abnormal losses, so hindi kasama sa pagkupit ng cost ratio kasi nga period cost, sabi sa cost accounting. So therefore, minus, 2, 000, minus 2,000 sa cost, minus 4,000 sa retail. So if we add, 
So, add lang natin, minus natin yung negative. Makukuha natin na goods available for sale is 269,000 for retail and 158,800 for cost. So, next, uh, ito na yung pinahanap doon sa problem. So, goods available for sale at cost and at retail. Next requirement. So, sabi niya, compute the cost ratio using average method and using FIFO method. So, ang pinagkaiba lang nila sa pag-compute ng cost ratio, so, ang cost ratio natin is yung cost amount lang. So, cost na goods available for sale tsaka yung cost at retail. So, kasi pag sinabing retail, may markup yun. Kaya lang, pag sinabing average, kasama yung beginning inventory. Pag sinabing FIFO, di lang natin isasama yung beginning inventory. So, therefore, kapag letter A kasi ang hinahanap is cost ratio using average method. So, kasama yung beginning inventory. So, that will be 158-800. So, please go back to the uh, data para at least aware kayo na tama yung uh, kinoconsider kong amount. So, 158-800. Yan yung total goods available for sale at cost. I-divide natin dun sa total goods available for sale at retail which is yung 269,000 so 269,000 so therefore 158,800 divided by 269 lalabas this is 59.03% yan next natin hinihingi is FIFO naman so cost ratio using FIFO method uh, take note, so dapat mas mababa yung numerator kasi uh, hindi ko consider yung beginning inventory. After yung numerator at denominator, mas pababa. So, ang beginning inventory at cost is 60,000. So, 158,800 minus 60,000 tayo. So, that is 98. Ayos so, mo 98. 800. So, syempre, yung uh, tigas uh, at retail, 269,000 minus natin yung beginning inventory, which is 93,000. So, that will give us 173. So, 173,000. So, 173,000, 98,800 divided by, I'm sorry, it's not 173, it's 176. This is 176,000. So, 98,800 divided by 176,000. So, lalabas, this is 56. 56.14%. Ayan. 14%. Ayan. So, kailangan natin yung cost ratio. Ibig sabihin yung ratio ng... Uh, goods available for sale at cost versus dun sa goods available for sale at retail para makumpit natin yung ending inventory at cost. No? Ayan. So, next requirement. So, sabi niya, compute the ending inventory at retail. So, remember, uh, meron tayong uh, goods available for sale at retail. So, para masolve yan, kailangan natin yung total goods available for sale at retail. Siyempre, kasama dyan yung beginning inventory kasi total goods available for sale. So, that is 269,000. So, ang kailangan ko na lang dito is uh, take note, dapat adjusted pa yan for normal losses and uh, employee discounts. So, dapat babawasin ko pa yun talaga. Kaya lang, usually, ang ginagawa lang dyan sa kasi tinatanong lang naman ending inventory, i-add na lang natin yung normal losses Tsaka yung employee discount dun sa net sales. Since yung net sales, uh, yan yung cost of goods sold at retail. Kasi yung total goods available for sale natin at retail. Di ba dun sa gross profit ratio, para makupit natin yung ending inventory, if you remember, yung goods available for sale, ibabawas ko yung cost of goods sold, makukupit ko yung ending inventory. So this time, ganun din naman. Yung goods available for sale, ibabawas ko din yung ending inventory. Ay, yung cost of goods sold, sorry. Makukumpit mo rin yung ending inventory. Yun nga lang, yung cost of goods sold natin dito is not given or not provided to us. So therefore, uh, yung net sales ang gagamitin natin. Kasi yung sales is cost of goods sold with markup. 
Ayan. So, yun. So, ganun pa din. Goods available for sale minus cost of goods sold na may markup lang. So, yung may markup na cost of goods sold, yun yung net sales. So, para makompute ko naman yung net sales, uh, meron akong sales. Uh, meron akong sales. So, this is 198,000. Ayan. So, kung meron binigay na sales discount, hindi is i-consider. So, kahit may bigay, walang binigay sa problem, okay lang. Uh, or kung may binigay sa problem, hindi pa rin natin siya ikasasama sa computation. Yun, kasi nga, hindi naman siya usually kinoconsider talaga. Hindi natin mapredict yung behavior na customer. Yung behavior natin mapredict. Kaya kasali sa purchase discount. Pero yung behavior ni customer, usually, hindi na predict Kaya hindi natin sasama sa pag-compute na sa pag-compute natin using retail at gross profit method yung sales discount. So, may binigay na sales return. So, syempre ito, i-consider natin. So, 2,000. Ayan. So, yung normal loss, dapat yan bawas dito sa 269. Pero, yung buong net sales naman, binabawas naman sa 269. So, dito na lang natin. Add na lang natin yung 3,000. So, meron ding employee discount. Dapat bawas din yan sa 269. Kaya lang, since di naman siya kinukonsider sa cost ratio, di mo na natin in sa 269. Dito na lang sa net sales. So, add ko yung 2,000. Ayan. So, 198 minus 2,000 plus 3,000 plus 2,000. That is 200, 1,000. So, ito yung cost of goods sold at retail. So, yun yung net sales. Ito yung goods available for sale at retail. So, pag binawas ko yung 200, 1 sa 269, makukompute ko 68,000. So, itong 68,000 na to, ito yung ending inventory at retail. Eh, ang pinipresent natin doon sa statement of financial position at sa statement of comprehensive income sa pagkupit ng goods of, uh, cost of goods sold is yung en ending inventory at cost. Kaya, ang last requirement is ayan, to compute the ending inventory at cost using average method. But may average method kasi Iba yung cost ratio ng uh, average method. Iba din yung cost ratio sa FIFO method. So, yun. So, yan. So, remember, sagutan na natin yan. So, at average method, so, ang ending inventory ko at retail, doon sa nakumpit ko kalina, is 68,000. Siyempre, mumultiply ko doon sa cost ratio uh, using average method. So, meron lang siyang beginning inventory. So, that is 59.03%. Ayan. So, 68,000 times 59.03% lalabas dito. This is 40,140.40. So, ito na yung ending inventory at cost. So, yan yung kailangan natin. Ayan. Next requirement is uh, ending inventory at cost using FIFO method. So, same procedure. Iba lang yung cost ratio na gagamitin. So, yung ending inventory at retail that is 68,000. So, i-multiply lang natin doon sa cost ratio. Siyempre, yung at FIFO. Yung hindi consider yung beginning inventory. So, that is 56 point. 14%. So, multiply lang. So, makakompute natin is 38, 172.73. Di ako na ground off dito. So, ito yung ending inventory at cost. Ayan. So, well lang. So, ang um, sekreto lang sa detail inventory method, you should uh, familiarize yourself dun sa treatment dun sa mga items. Yung mga departmental transferred in, freight in, purchase discount, etc. So, ang pinaka-technic lang, kapag merong movement ng inventory, affected both cost and retail. Pag wala, uh, either at cost lang or either at retail lang. Siyempre, yung markup at markdown, laging at retail ang affected, hindi si cost. Kasi ka, isabi ng markup, additional uh, profit eh. So, siyempre, yung retail, yun yung may profit. Yun lang. So, uh, that's the end. Uh, Isa tinatanong din yung pagkompit ng cost of goods sold. So, meron ka naman ng total goods available for sale. Di affected 
si normal losses or hindi nakaka-apekto si normal losses tsaka si uh, dito, si employee discount kasi sila if you go back dun sa previous slide so yung normal losses tsaka yung employee discount binabawas mo sila sa goods available for sale at retail before computing the cost ratio eh ang kailangan mong cost of goods sold lagi at cost lang so dapat doon ka magre-refer sa goods available for sale at cost ang nisip ko lang dyan Siyempre, pag, pag tinanong ka ng kasubod, so, di ba, net sales ka dun. So, this time naman, for financial reporting purposes, siyempre, consider mo na sa sales discount. Si sales discount lang naman, tsaka allowances, hindi mo siya consider for the purpose of computing cost ratio. Pero, pagdating sa presentation mo sa statement of comprehensive income, kinoconsider mo siyempre si sales discount kasi historical information yun. So, anyway, I refer to sa textbook natin. So, if you uh, want to read or study, so you can refer to our textbook. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know as usual. Thank you and good luck.